Have you ever experienced a lack of twigs early game? Maybe not enough gas because your only source of gas was brutally murdered by your local torbers? Or maybe you struggled with the name of the game and starved to death because all your food was spoiled. If you answer yes to any of these, then that might mean that you've experienced the pain of newer starting resource varieties. But what in the wonderful world is a starting resource variety and which one is right for you? That is a question I will hopefully answer in this video. First off, what exactly is starting resource variety and why should you care? There are two main ways of collecting twigs and gas, two of the most important resources in the game. The classic way of regional don't stop, with saplings and gas taking 3 and 4 days respectively to go back, that can easily be replanted anywhere, though you will need fertilizer for the gas. They don't go in winter and will wither in summer unless you have an ice flame mag to cool them with. The alternative, newer method of twigs and gas introduced in Don't Stop Together are twiggy trees and gas geckos. Gas geckos spawn next to the Ketadan in the Mosaic Biome, in the Kawaii Biome, and in the Dragonfly Desert. They have tails of gas that they shed when scared, dropping one curtain gas, which takes two days to go back, even if it is winter. Twiggy trees can be chopped for twigs, but will also drop twigs when they start a new golf cycle, going from old to short. One cycle will take between 9.5 and 13.5 days. When dropping a twig like this, it will first check in the two tile radius around it. If there are no twigs in that radius, it will always drop a twig. If there's already one twig there, it will have a 50% chance of dropping a twig, and if it's already two or more twigs in that area, it will not drop any twigs. Both gas geckos and twiggy trees can be harvested all year round and don't require fertilization of any sort. Twiggy trees can easily be replanted by placing the nut on the ground, while gas geckos can be very annoying to move. Finally, there's one more starting resource which isn't as much looked upon, but still pretty relevant to your world. That being bear bushes. The classic is just a regular bear bush that gives you one bear per bush and take 3 to 5 days to regrow. The alternative, newer version, is juicy bear bushes that give you 3 juicy bears per bush. They give more hunger and bonus health compared to regular bears, but take longer to go back, taking 9 to 13 days to go, and only 2 days before the berries spoil. Now, you might be asking, how do I choose which resource I want in my world? When you're creating a new world, you have a setting called Starting Resource Variety in World Generation. This also applies to the caves, but is less relevant there, which I'll explain why later on in the video. The default setting will have a 50-50% chance for each of the three basic resources to be replaced with the alternative. The setting it highly random will give you a higher chance of the alternative version replacing the classic one. And if you put on classic, you will only start with, you guessed it, the classic resources. Now I just have to go on a tangent here and say that these numbers are just guesses. I could not find any direct confirmation on them. All I could find was a comment from a developer six years ago from when the game released saying that highly random gives you better chances, or more specifically, more of the new resources, whatever that means. If I find the exact numbers, I'll post them in a pin comment or something. But for now, I'll just say that it's 50 50 if it's uh, on default, with a slightly higher chance for starting resource, the newer starting resource varieties if it is on highly default, but yeah, I don't know, and that's just a guess, don't take my word on it exactly, but that should be the rough estimate. Now something else to note is that unless you are using mods, you cannot customize which variant you get, at least you want all resources to be classic. This means that if you want a world with twiggy trees, dust geckos, and regular bear bushes, your best bet is to just re-roll until you get that exact combo, or just simply use a mod that lets you customize the exact starting resources. No matter what version you choose, you can always get the other source of twigs and gas. If you have classic resources, you can get twiggy trees by just waiting around as they can randomly spawn in the world over time. For gas geckos, you have a 1% chance of gas stuff turning into gas geckos when picking gas stuff that has been transplanted for at least 20 to 30 days, but this will not happen in the winter even if you have gas ready to pick. If you don't want to get the new resources, then you can disable them by turning off twiggy tree regolf and gas gecko morphing and world settings, which can be done whenever you want, though I won't remove already existing uh, twiggy trees or gas geckos. Now, what about the opposite? If you have a world with twiggy trees and gas geckos, you can get the classic version from multiple places. Gas stuffs will always spawn in the savanna, in caves, there are certain set pieces that are basically guaranteed to spawn in the green areas of the caves. They will always have a bunch of either gas stuffs or sapling, typically a bit of both, on Luna and Pearl's Island, you can find Luna saplings, which work identical to regular saplings, 
and Vistagite, Skill Points, Wormwood can create Luna Saplings at the cost of 5 health and 5 twigs. There will also always be spiky bushes in the swamp and the two deserts that will go year round with a regrowth time of 4 days, dealing 3 damage. Now you should know all the starting resource variety, but which one is better, the classic or the alternative versions? You may already think you know the answer is classic, as a lot of people, including the biggest DST YouTuber, solidly stand by the classic resources, despising the newer ones, especially Twiggy Trees. But I'd say, it depends. Both versions have upsides and downsides that should be taken into consideration when choosing your starting resources, and that's what we're gonna do now. First off, let's compare the two ways of getting twigs. Twiggy trees versus saplings. Saplings are plentiful and ready to be picked from the get-go, whereas twiggy trees will take time before they start producing twigs. One thing to know is that if you have a world with twiggy trees, you will get some free twigs on the ground in the spawn biome, so you don't die to darkness on day one. Saplings give you twigs faster, with a regrowth time of 4 days, and will go fully off screen, while Twiggy Trees will only progress one stage when off screen. What do you mean they only go one stage off screen? What does that mean? That basically means that if you for example see a Twiggy Tree in its 12 state, then deload it by going away, then the next time you see it, when it loads in, as long as enough time has passed, it will be old, no matter how long you wait. In other words, if you visit a Twiggy Tree one time a year, then that tree will take 4 years to give you one twig given that it starts in its small state. This may seem pretty bad at first, especially if you stay at base a lot, but remember, twiggy trees start in random states, so you don't have to load an area of naturally spawning twiggy trees four times just to get twigs. Twiggy trees will go all the way around while saplings won't go back in winter and will wither naturally in summer. Trees are also faster if you're out and about, as harvesting a sapling is slower than just picking up a twig on the ground. This, however, can be mitigated if you just plant a bunch of saplings next to each other, as it will always produce twigs, despite the distance to other saplings, unlike twiggy trees, which need some personal space. And speaking of planting saplings in base, with Wicker Bomb's applied silviculture, you can easily regrow saplings, along with nearby grass and trees, instantly at the cost of some sanity. This can also be done with twiggy trees, but is way less efficient, as she only takes them to the tall stage, which doesn't give you any twigs, unless you chop them down. You also have to wait for the sapling to go into a small stage tree before you're able to use the book on it. Overall, I personally recommend saplings over twiggy trees, especially for those who plan to be more docile and stay at the base more. A sapling is to go back quicker, can easily be replanted very compactly in the base, and they don't have to be loaded four times to get twigs, or just be constantly loaded just to get your twigs. But that is my personal opinion. However, that doesn't mean twiggy trees are bad. If you're doing more of an aggressive mobile playstyle, or if you just don't use that many twigs, I would consider twiggy trees. As long as you don't burn through too many twigs while the game, the twiggy trees will give you a nice source of twigs throughout the year that can be harvested quicker than saplings. Also, if you're struggling with twigs while the game in a twiggy tree world, you can dig up uh, all versions of tree saplings and you'll get a few extra twigs for the early game. Now then, what about grass? Which is better? Gars Tufts or Gars Geckos? Gars Tufts have the advantage of being unkillable, except for burning to death, that doesn't count. And they don't need a fence. As fun fact, Gars Tufts do not have legs. Geckos, on the other hand, may move potentially into the death, unless fenced, which can be a lot of effort to build. The downside of being unable to move the Gars Geckos can seem pretty annoying, but remember the upsides. They don't require fertilization, they are available all year round, they have a short gig of time, and are way quicker to gather, as one horde of gas geckos will give you up to a stack of gas that can be quickly picked up. There's also the fact that unlike Twiggy Tree Worlds, gas gecko worlds will still compete back with a ton of gas tufts from both savannah and caves, meaning that if you just want a bunch of still standing, unkillable, except for burning, gas tufts in your base, just take some from the savannah, or just the caves, it's that simple. Firstly, I think that Gauss Geckos and Gauss Tufts are about equally matched. Gauss Geckos are easy to harvest early game, as they can always spawn in the Mosaic biome, the one that has a mixed turf and always contain gold boulders, making it a go-to place when starting out, giving you more than enough Gauss till you find the savannah or start basing. They're still prone to death, and if you forget Gauss when leaving base, it can be harder to get some Gauss if you're not nearby. If you have a Gauss Tuft world, you can just put Gauss in your base and wait for them to become Gas geckos by just waiting for the morph time. Uh, and thus, overall, it's not too hard to get the other version of Gas. 
and both are good in their own sense. So I'd say when it comes down to Gauss, it's all about what you yourself think, or just put it down to chance. Finally, there's the berry bushes. Juicy berry bushes versus regular berry bushes. Of the three new resource variants introduced in Dolts of Together, juicy berries are probably the most liked one. Although taking over two times as long to go and spoiling three times as fast, there's still a lot of people who prefer the juicy variants. But why? You see, as long as you don't let berries spoil, juicy berries will give you a slightly high average berry count, one every four days on average, being 0.25 berries a day, versus three every 11 days on average, being 0.27 juicy berries a day. The fact that they spoil so fast can also be an advantage, as they allow you to easily gather your for booster shots or fertilization in the early game. And that's not all. On top of all of that, the extra hunger and health they give will make them contend with meatballs for being easy and quick stomach filling food, as three cooked juicy berries only give you six less hunger than a meatball while healing four more health from one singular berry bush. It's because of all of this that I personally prefer juicy berry bushes over regular berry bushes. For bigger servers, they give more food for the people, they are the easy source of rot, one of the best ways to get fertilization for plants, and they give you more hunger. The long gig of time can also be entirely negated with Rickerbomb's two plant going books going either 10 or 15 bushes back in an instant at the cost of a tiny amount of sanity or a little amount of sanity. Even so, for some people, especially those who like stockpiling food for longer adventures, berries can be more convenient. Regular berries can also be converted into fertilizer by just giving them to a rare pig. So that will give you manure and not got, and if you want got, save for booster shots, then that doesn't work as well, because it takes longer to spoil. Still, 6 days is not that long. Now, it's time for the conclusion. Which starting resource variety should you use? If you plan on doing something like a boss search where you'll be on the move a lot, highly randomized might be good for you, as twiggy trees will supply you with a lot of twigs throughout your adventures, and gas geckos can be harvested quick sessions when you pass by them, and quickly early game in the mosaic when you're getting your early gold. Default might be good for bigger groups of people, as there will always be one person setting a base, making beautiful base, building quark pots, and collecting gas stuffs, collecting saplings for the base. This means that you enjoy benefits of both resource varieties potentially. There's also the fact that juicy berries give bonus hunger, making it easier to not starve together, which is the name of the game. Finally, there's classic. Classic can be good if you just want the good old reliable. It's easy to move, you know for a fact when it will and won't go, and you don't have to worry about your berries spoiling. And as long as you don't plan on having your world pass a few fortnights, you can trust that Twiggy Trees will naturally sprout and Garstoff will naturally morph eventually. As for Juicy Berries, you can all put caves on highly random, and if you're lucky, you get Juicy Berries in the caves, which can then can be transplanted to Overworld. Or you could use Wormwood to create Juicy Berries in a berry world. With all that said, it's all about personal preference, and whichever one you like, you shouldn't talk bad about those who like a different one than you. And you shouldn't avoid people just because they have a different preference than you. Say, if you like Classic, you shouldn't avoid playing with someone just because they have a Twiggy Tree World. That's just wrong. And as for me, personally, I don't mind any of them too much, except for Twiggy Trees. They can potentially be a real pain in the arse all the game if I need too many Twigs. And just, I just use the default setting. With all that said, this video is now over. Hopefully you got a new perspective. Maybe you learned something new. Despite how basic the topic may be, being basic resources, and with that said, be good up, sure.